Okay, so let's talk about um, let's talk about this passage number five, the dueling scientist. Um, number twenty eight is the first one. Which of the following statements was either claimed or implied by student three is scientifically inaccurate. So be careful on that. Inaccurate. And it's because he says, or this student number three says, uh, charges of like signs attract each other. I don't think so. I think a positive attracts a negative. If you're like signs, you repel each other, right? <clears throat> and we can actually see that right here. Student number three says right here, charges of like signs attract each other and opposite signs repel each other. This person's got it backwards. Uh, number 29. Single type of charged particles and student two's explanation is correct. These particles were most likely what? Well, it's a science knowledge. The answer should be electrons. And if we look here, we can see right here, um, the currents consisted of negative charges. Well, what has a negative charge? An electron does. So that's how we know it's gotta be the electron because it says negative charge and that's science knowledge. Um, number 30, if student two's explanation is correct, then a magnetic field would be expected to exert a force on which of the following objects? An ion in motion. Now, if we look at it, we'll see in student two says right here, a magnetic field exerts a force on any charge in motion, any charge in motion. So the key is must be in motion. Um, well, H, a neutral atom in motion, that's not a charge, but it is in motion. It's got to be letter F. That's a charge. An ion means you have a charge and you are in motion. Okay, question number 31. <coughs> um, were the electric fields generated by the currents parallel or anti-parallel? Well, we are told that on in the reading, electric, according to student one, right? Electric fields attract each other when parallel, repel each other when anti-parallel. Also, we're told upward is position X, downward is position Y. And that's what I wrote down here. So it's gotta be anti-parallel, right? Because the left-hand current was flowing up because we were in the um, X and the right-hand current was flowing down because we were in the Y. Uh, 32 asks, which of the following figures is consistent with both figure two and student three's explanation? I remember student three said that like attract and opposite repel. And we also saw earlier that X is upward, right? Now, upward means positively charged. And if I'm looking at it, all, all of these choices, none of them have the X as a positive charge, just this one. And this one is showing that the like charges are attracting each other, which is what student three incorrectly said. So it's got to be letter F. Uh, 33. Answer should be letter A, right? What's different between student one and student two? Well, a field attracts or repels another field, whereas in student two, a field attracts or repels charges. Now, the way to see that, it should be in the same location of the paragraph. Like if I look at student one, it says right here, electric fields attract each other. So fields attract fields. So that's why I went with this first part. Now, student two, if I look in the same part here, it says a magnetic field exerts a force on any charge of motion. And later on, a field generated by one current attracted the charges of another current. So here it's saying a field attracts a current or a charge. And that's what that second part is. And that's why it's letter A. And then the last one is the science knowledge question. Which of the following procedures could best test student two's explanation? Well, classic rod, I don't think those hold charges, right? Um, an uncharged rubber strip, uh, rubber doesn't conduct the charge, right? Uh, a light bulb, no. Oh, compass needle, yeah. Compass needle would be the one that would do, letter G. Okay, were there any questions on this passage? Okay, so passage number three, dealing with HDD and CDD trend lines. Um, number 15, according to figure one, did the maximum HDD occur at the same year as the minimum CDD? The answer is no, because the minimum is right here, right? And that's around 1992. And the maximum HDD is right here which is in 1996. 
So that's why it's letter D. You got to be careful because letter C has those backwards. So on the science section, really pay attention to that parallel structure. On uh, number 16, based on table one, so we look at table one, in Dallas, the total CDD was approximately how many times as great as the total HDD? So here's Dallas. How many times bigger is the CDD than the HDD? Looking at these choices, yeah, it's got to be letter G, letter D, letter J rather, and it's approximately right. And we know it can't be, you know, these three or those two rather. And when I multiply by five, five times that 452, it's not even coming close. Um, 17, based on the table one for all the cities between 40 and 50, which of the following statements describe HDD and CDD? So if I look at those between 40 and 50, right? So from New York all the way to Seattle, looking at all the choices, eliminating as I go, letter A, HDD is always greater than 2,500. Now, I, for me, 18 was the stinker question in here. Assume on a particular day, TD equals 65 degrees Fahrenheit. What would be the values of HDD and CDD? Took me a while to figure it out um, until I finally saw like the formula right here. Um, I'm not sure about anyone else, but it, I was really looking in the chart here, was looking in the graph, couldn't find it. Finally, I see it right here. Oh, HDD is 65 minus TD. Well, the temperature is 65, right? Well, then 65 minus 65 is zero. So the HDD is zero. So I get rid of H and J. And then it tells me that the CDD is whatever that temperature is minus 65. Well, gosh, that's going to be 65 minus 65, which again would be zero. So it's letter F. Okay, I was searching a lot trying to find that one. Um, number 19, which of the following graphs best illustrates the latitude and the CDD for each of the cities listed in table one. Now notice it's saying southernmost to northernmost on all of these. So when I look at the table, the southern states are at the top, right? And then we kind of get further and further north. So if we look at the CDD, starts off pretty big, then it gets small. And I'm like, well, it can't be this one because this one starts off small. Can't be this one because this one starts off small also. So I've gotten rid of two choices. I'm down to a 50-50. Now it starts off um, starts off big here, then it gets small. So can't be this one because this gets big after. And this one starts off big, gets small. It's got to be letter A. And then the last one for us is number 20. It's math knowledge, right? These are the two, this is the formula that they gave us for it. And it says that the trend line in figure one, the slope of the trend line is negative. So that means that the HDD is decreasing over time, barely, but it is decreasing over time. So if this, this answer is getting negative, well then that TDD has to be getting bigger than 65, right? Because we'll be subtracting more and more and more. So TD must be increasing. Kind of a math knowledge question. I don't like that one. All right. Anyone have any questions on this passage at all? Oh, I see someone in the chat. Sorry. Let me um, stop recording.